Stanford University. Yeah, welcome, welcome to this event, and that's a long title, right? Long, long title. Um, so I, I have been studying um, the role of emotion in decision-making now for more than 15 years, um, a lot of it from the vantage point of the human brain. Um, and um, one of the conclusions that I have arrived at from my research, years of research, and um, also research that other um, labs have done, is that emotion plays a crucial role in the decision-making process by allowing us to resolve decision conflicts, right? So you're, you're meeting a fork in the road, and it is the emotional system that allows us to reliably take a particular course of action and emerge from the decision feeling confident about the decision. So this is, emotion is what yields decisions with conviction. Now, a question that you might ask is, why is emotion, why is decision confidence important? Right? In fact, if you look at the decision-making literature and look at all the experts who talk about decision-making, they would treat confidence, and even overconfidence, as being bad, because this is what gives rise to the biases like the escalation of commitment bias, right? Where you're throwing good resources, good money after bad decisions. What I'm going to do over the next few minutes is talk about the virtues of decision confidence. And I would even say decision overconfidence. The virtues of emerging from a decision feeling confident about the decision, and the virtues of invoking emotion into the decision-making process. And to do that, let's first start our discussion from the vantage point of the firm, right? So you have the, you're the firm and you have a client now, there it's pretty obvious that you want your client to be confident about the decision that he or she has made. It's pretty obvious, right? Because otherwise, you're going to end up with a client who becomes what we call a high-maintenance client. <laughs> we all experience that. And I used to be in sales before I came into academia. I mean, you'll have these, these customers, these clients out there. You make one pitch, you make a second pitch, and third pitch, and then they go, well, come next week. And then they'll say, well, I had to consult someone. And then they'll make their decision, and they'll still be griping. <laughs> You're spending like 90% of your time with that one client. I'm sure you experienced that, right? Hopefully, it's not you, the client. But <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it's with your client. So, so here it's obvious that you want to have the client invoking emotion into the decision-making process and emerging from the decision feeling confident and reap all the downstream benefits, right? I mean, you're going to have loyalty, you're going to have positive word of mouth, um, and so on. Now, let us look at it from your vantage point, you as the decision-maker. Why is this is important. With you as a decision maker, number one, it is important because it is decision confidence that gives rise to the passion that is associated with the course of action that has been taken. So imagine that you are an entrepreneur pitching to an investor, or let me say the other way around, that you are the investor, uh, and there is an entrepreneur who is pitching to you. And let us say that the entrepreneur is not very confident about the course of action he or she has taken. Now, that entrepreneur can present all the facts, all the figures, all the arguments, all these rational things out there, but his or her body language will reveal this lack of confidence. And your gut will tell you that, well, I can see all the merits of this investment opportunity, but you know what? I'm going to pass, right? So if you think about it, this passion that emerges from decision confidence is extremely persuasive for the emotional brain. So that's one reason. The second reason is, think about you as a leader, and imagine that you are a commander in the military. And you're on a combat mission, and you have to give an order to your troops. And imagine that you're not confident about the course of action that you're going to take. Right? 
that's going to have an effect on the confidence that your troops are going to have, and that's going to result in suboptimal performance, a suboptimal outcome. So it's very clear that if you're that military commander, you've got to be very convinced that, that the decision that you're making out there is the right one. Okay? Now, let us look at yet another reason these might come across as being obvious. The third one that I'll talk about will probably come, up, come about as being slightly less obvious. So one thing that we have found in all our research is that what decision confidence does, now keep in mind that there is a decision process, right? I mean, you've gone through the decision-making process, you've emerged from the decision, then comes the actual experience. So go back to your time uh, before you came to Stanford, you made a decision to come to Stanford. And then you had an experience out here. It turns out that decision conf uh, confidence, that is the confidence with which you emerged from the decision, has a huge impact on the utility that you're going to extract from the experience. Not only in terms of the pleasure, what we call the hedonic component of experience, but also the engagement component. It has a direct impact on what we call the wanting system in the brain, essentially the dopamine system in the brain, it has a direct impact on that, and therefore has an impact on how motivated you are, how engaged you are in the particular task or in the experience. So if you think about it at the end of the day, it is so critical that you invoke emotion into the decision-making process because of the virtues that accrue from there. Number one is going to be this passion, which is very persuasive. Number two is this confidence that is very contagious. And number three is the extraction of utility from the experience utility phase. And therefore, in answer to this original question that was there in the original slide, is confidence or even overconfidence underrated, my answer is uh, it has been vastly underrated. Thank you. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.